Welcome to At the Table with Tony. My name is Anthony Shelia, better known as Tony Manja. And today I have the extreme honor and privilege of welcoming, now let me see if I get this right, 13 time world pizza champion. 13 time, yep. <laughs> Tony Gimignani, all the way from California, uh, checking with checking in with us here on the East Coast. So, Tony, thank you so much for taking some time out to come on At the Table with Tony today. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen each other. Yeah, absolutely. I think the last time I saw you was probably at one of Roberto's events at Castel in New York City. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, what was it? The, the the pizza. They had the pizza festival a couple of years yeah, ago. We had a mozzarella, festa de mozzarella, maybe or something like that. That was great. Yeah, we had the pizza <laughs> festival. Yeah, you know, you always yeah. I always find myself at Caste with Roberto, <laughs> hanging out pizzas or working behind him, being his oven man. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> but but so let's get into the the meat and potatoes. I want to know about Tony Gimignani. So you are a California boy, right? Born yeah. and raised. Born and raised in California. So, so I know obviously there were a lot of Italian Ameri or a lot of Italians that settled in California, and really, especially like in San Francisco and San Diego, um, even in was it the Central Valley where a lot of the uh, wines are grown and where a lot of uh, farming is. And so, kind of how tell us the story of the Gimignani family, how they came to uh, California. Yeah, so my great grandfather, uh, they came from Lucca, Italy, a small village called Gombatelli near, near uh, Camiore and Carrara. They came over. Um, they were my, he was uh, Angelo Gimignani. He was married to Olympia, originally Olympia Charu, uh, from uh, who originally their family came from Sardinia. So you kind of look at this Lucchese, Sardinian uh, married couple that came together. Came here, settled in Fremont, and uh, we were farmers. So my grandpa was a 30, we had about 35 acres. He uh, started his own farm. He left his his great-grandfather pass, or my great-grandfather passed when he was very, very young, his father. And my grandpa started a, uh, a farm, mostly apricots, cherries. We did fava beans, but we had everything on that farm. I mean, uh, that's what I did for about 18 years growing up. Um, yeah, a lot of farmers back then. There was the Gardinos. Uh, Soitas, there's all these different farmers around, and they were all Italian. So if you look at Fremont uh, in its entire Fremont, California, uh, if you remember from back in the day when those orchards were there, uh, man, there was corn fields. You drive your motorcycle across from one field to another, and you didn't know which farmer's land you were really on, and it was mixed <laughs> up, and it was just great. And, and they were all Italians. It was, it was a special time growing up. So, the, so, so that, so Fremont, California was a large Italian population at one time. Large Italian, Portuguese, a lot of farmers, uh, a lot of farmers in San Jose. We had uh, on my, on my Portuguese side, actually, we had farmers that farmed markets and did strawberry fields. So if you look at my family in its entirety, uh, mostly farmers growing up, uh, it, it's, it's kind of crazy, but if you look at it, yeah. So, so let's see. So how did you get into pizza? So where did the, where did the P I, obviously I know, you know, we, we say the Italians invented pizza, the Neapolitans, uh, yeah. you know, kind of perfected the pizza, but so how did you find pizza? Was it something that was in your family as well, or you just came to, to love it growing up? Well, growing up, I mean, everybody loves pizza. I mean, going, you know, to you know, always recall a place called Uncle Joe's is a pizzeria independent uh, going with my grandpa. Friday night was always pizza night. That was always a special night. For, but for me to get seriously, uh, you know, serious and get into the business, you know, I would say when I was 17 year old, uh, just getting out of high school, I graduated. And um, at that time, I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, a lot of my friends went off to college. I was with my girlfriend at the time. We still were in our hometown, Fremont. My brother, Frank, who opened up uh, a pizzeria, uh, during that time, he was building a pizzeria called Paisano's. He said, hey, do you want to do this with me? Um, I had no clue what I was going to do. And, uh, you know, I said, OK, I'll, you know, I'll try it out. I was 17 going on 18. We opened up Paisano's. We built it through that summer after I graduated. And, man, I, I, I fell in love with it. And I looked at this in front of me. I always saw you can make it better. You know, you're just for real. You have that ticket. And you're, uh, you know, making it that customers watching you with that kid and you're opening up the pizza or stretching it out and tossing it, you know, landing in that oven, finishing that pizza. And there was so much gratification into that. It, it was my calling. And it was like, man, I, it was like, all, you know, I cooked growing up, but my mom was the best cook. You know, everybody's mom was the best cook. <laughs> my mom, we'd go out to the orchard, we'd get basil, we'd go out and get tomatoes. My grandpa grew squash. We had nectarines, figs. I mean, we had everything on the farm other than just, you know, the stuff that was mentioned earlier. 
So like being around fresh produce, being around fresh, you know, vegetables, being around uh, ingredients. I mean, when, when my mom cooked and I'm sure when your mom cooked, you know, it was, <laughs> it was so much flavor and freshness. So here I am creating this pizzas and, and, you know, we're going to the market or we're talking to our produce purveyors and it, it was, it wasn't that hard. It was funny. Like, like cooking came easy to me, at least mm. figuring out the ingredients, the dough and everything like that, the chemistry behind it, that was the hard part. But I fell in love with it early and I, and I, and I, and I, and I've always loved cooking. And for some reason it was my calling. I had no clue. And my brother just kind of landed in my lap and I'm like, okay, here it is. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Now, I, I think that you you might have been the first person I've ever seen do like these acrobatic uh, pizza tricks. I, I've never seen it before. And I, I, don't, I mean, man, it has to be. I was probably in the 90s when I saw I guess it was on Food Network or, or on, yeah. on something. I, I, I vividly remember seeing you doing. So is, is that kind of did you because I know that you you are very pizza is kind of you, you are serious about pizza. You're serious about the different styles of pizza because we can yeah. get, we'll, get a little, we'll get into that a little bit. But but what kind of was was like the acrobatics, like the first. I guess your first, um, maybe, uh, you know, making it big in a way was, was through the acrobatics. Yeah. So, you know, when we started out, my brother taught me the basic toss, you know, tossing yeah. it up, watching it. There was this window at Paisano's, a kid comes in, you toss a pizza, you maybe do a trick. <laughs> I got pretty good at it. And my brother had some managers that worked at pizzerias before and they were good and they, and they would do tricks and say, yeah, this guy was, you know, on, um, back in the day, he would, he would talk about a guy named Barry O'Halloran. And the guy uh, was on uh, to Tonight Show with with uh, Johnny Carson, not Jay wow. Leno. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and they would talk about this guy. And, you know, you're this young kid. You're making – you want to be better than the other guys. So I would practice trying to be better than these guys. And I got good. So, you know, pizza acrobatics, the competitions really started in the 80s with Pizza Today, Pizza Expo. The comp really that circuit it was called the Pizza Olympics. And the Olympics got mad. They called it Pizza Olympics and World Pizza <laughs> Games and then all this stuff. So 91, I started making pizzas. I've been making pizzas for almost 30 years. And then all of a sudden, 91 rolls around. I'm learning the craft. And all of a sudden, it gets into 95. And I go in 1994. I'm 20 years old, 1994, <laughs> first pizza expo. You know, you're in Vegas. Everything's crazy. And and you're able, you know, I'm trying to drink when I'm under 21 and <laughs> doing all this stuff. And, and here was these guys on the convention floor doing these tricks and I'm like watching these guys and God, I can do some of this, you know, and the guys are, Hey, you should compete. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to wait. So the night of the competition and the competition was at the MGM grand. Uh, there was a competition. I, my brother said, you want to go out? And I said, you know, not tonight. My brother's like, you're in Vegas. Are you, are you, you don't want to go out and party? You know, and I'm like, you know, I think I want to watch these world games. <laughs> and then he said, what? And I got a taxi and you know, I'm 20 years old. I should be, you know, hanging out at the strip clubs or going crazy. I'm, like, I'm going to be serious for once. I'm going to spend some money, get in a taxi, go there, pay the money to get in. I walked in that and watched these guys. And I'm like, man, these guys are amazing. Uh, Emilio Giacometti, he was a one-time world champion. And I'm watching this guy on stage and he's doing this routine. And I was just like, man, I'm going to come back and win this thing. Man. I want to, I want to do this. So as I got better and I, you know, kids thought it were, the greatest thing in the world. Dad's kind of looked at it and said, Oh, I remember when a guy used to do that, the pizzeria, when I was young, it, <laughs> it, satisfy, it satisfies old and young. It's what we do. And all of a sudden it was just so simple. It's like I, I'm doing hundreds of pizzas a day and I'm just doing a trick or got better at it and went across the shoulders and things really progressed in the nineties. And I ended up really kind of trying to promote as much as I can. I mean, if you, if you look at it back in the day, you know, there was no YouTube. You couldn't Google it. You couldn't find <laughs> get a VHS and you sent it out and guys would learn how to throw from my how-to videos. And there was just, it was just like Tony Hawk. He would bust out moves <laughs> and then you'd come back the following year and do tricks and you'd be like, oh my God, he did that or he did this and Christian Asoy or these guys would bang out different tricks on skateboards. So very much like that, you know, the progression was, a little bit and 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 it was super hard and you know it, it was interesting time back then it was, it was exciting and and like you said the food network the food network came out later in the year 2002 2003 4 and they said we want to do pizza competition so the first pizza champions challenge the first pizza battle 
I was on both of those and I got the gold medal in cooking. I got the gold medal in acrobats and Guinness Book of World Records. So it was a cool time, man, seeing the transition of back then and guys that stopped and the new guys like Joe Carlucci and all of a sudden and then the now Justin Wadstein and George Jove and, and Jamie Collington, guys that are coming out now. So it's it's cool to see the progression. And I'm happy to still be in it, you know, or at least well, still have been in it. <laughs> Well, pizza, pizza really, I mean, like you said, growing up, pizza, you know, Friday night was your night. That was my night as well to get the pizza. But really, pizza brings people together, whether it's your family, whether it's your friends. You know, pizza is an important part. It's it's like, again, with anything, with any kind of food, any food is usually around Italians. It's bringing people together. So, you know, you know, it's communal. It was a time when think, things were simpler, you know, in life. Like you and I talk, like, you know, when you're a kid. You had it when you're a kid. You loved it, and when you, it, it always brings you back to that moment. I don't care what's going around in the world, and the coronavirus is going crazy right now, and everything. But I take that one bite. All I'm thinking about is just this delicious uh, food in my mouth. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there, there's this thing. I, 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 whenever I talk to somebody who's in the pizza world, they always bring this up because I learned about it from. Do uh, you know? You know, Paulie G. Yeah, I know Paulie G. So I, I learned about this pizza cognition theory from him. About the first pizza that you ever eat is the pizza that you that kind of you, you always you always yearn for you always want uh, uh, totally. you know so I, I mean so was was Uncle Joe's your, that was oh, that, that's kind always, of yeah I mean it's something that's gone around for years uh, you know and 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 when it comes to that is it's that you, you look at it say Uncle Joe's is that cheese slice that you had and you tasted and you're always looking for that but you're like was I am I smarter now was it really that good. <laughs> Was it not? I mean, was it just terrible pizza? But I just fell in love with it. It really doesn't matter because you didn't judge it. You just no, you ate it. it. <laughs> so, so when it comes to that, it's just like, yeah, I mean, like I think that 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 goes back like for years and years and years of, of, of remembering what it was and and just enjoying it. You know, like it's just like it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't have to judge it. It's just love it. <laughs> <laughs> So then, how did you get? Because now you you're you're, you're pretty much a lot more, a lot of your restaurants are based in San Francisco, right? In in the Italian neighborhood, North Beach. Yeah, yeah, I have so, uh, four concepts in North Beach. So how did you? So is it now? I mean, I'm I'm gonna, this is gonna, I'm gonna sound ignorant here, but is Fremont close to San Francisco? Yeah, so Fremont is about forty minutes from San Francisco. Castro Valley is a little closer. Grew up in Fremont. The pizzeria I was at, Paisano's, was there for I was there for about almost eighteen years, seventeen, eighteen years. I went off and opened up Tony's. Um, what was weird about Tony's or different about Tony's was I have a school incorporated into it. So I opened up one of the first schools in in, in the U.S. It was International School of Pizza. And I needed to really intertwine that in Tony's Pizza Napolitana. So we just don't do Neapolitan there. You know, we do anywhere from Sicilian, Grandma, St. Louis, Detroit, Classic American, Classic Italian. We have all these different ovens and styles. And then we have Slice House connected to it, a little specialty shop where we make raviolis and fresh pasta called Giovanni's. And then Capo's, I have a Chicago concept that's right down the street. And they're all literally in the Little Italy, North Beach district of San Francisco. Yeah. So when did so what was the first restaurant? It was Tony's? Tony's was my first restaurant by itself okay. when I left my brother and opened up. And then Slice House and everything else kind of opened up. What, and what, year, what year did you open Tony's? I opened up Tony's about eleven years ago, two thousand nine. I opened okay, Tony's. and that and that, and that was when I was out in in, in uh, San Francisco because I remember it was, it was super it hard. Was it was it was it was super hard to get into in, into the restaurant. We had to wait for for a while. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna put up a picture. This is oh, the first man. time I met you. Uh, this, I, I this. look a lot younger there. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I'm like a little kid, man. You look like a little kid. <laughs> and yeah, this, that, you that, posted that pizza. So I'm the hardest critic on my pizzas. You're like. The other day you posted that pizza. Yeah, we're going to have Tony on the show. And he, and, and he sent me this pizza. I'm like, oh, man. So when I look at that pizza, that was young. It didn't it didn't really brown right well. It didn't leopard right. So I'm looking at my own pizza and I'm, 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 I'm you know, I'm chopping it up right now because I'm like, no, 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 it's, it's not that good. I'm, I'm going to make you a free one the next time you come in. <laughs> so I'm looking at like, okay, God, was I a little hard on it? Was I nervous? Was it the opening day? It's so funny because uh, you posted it. I'm like, huh, my pizza looks a little different. No, so so so, so yeah, let's 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 talk about pizza. Let's talk about because really, like you said before, pizza is chemistry. It's really science. I mean, it's not it's it's not like you know when you when you put together a dish, say like a if you're making like tomato sauce, you know you could a, a little bit of basil, a little bit of oregano. You want to put a little garlic, a little onion. You could you could 
kind of if you, if if you feel that it's not right, you can adjust the flavoring. Pizza yep. and, and 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 baking in particular is more of a science. So kind of talk to us a little bit about the science of pizza, <laughs> so okay. to speak. Well, when you look at you know the foundation of pizza, it's always dough sauce cheese. I mean, let's look at dough. There's, your dough can be complex, and when I mean what I mean by complex is I, I use starters. They're called pre ferments that are that are in all my dough recipes. So your your dough is the foundation of your pizza. Uh, some people try to make the ultimate starter, the ultimate sourdough, and they're looking for nothing but like you know sour in their in their in their in their mouth. And for me, cooking is always about balance. It's not about over complex dough, and it's not about over complex ingredients. It's always about when it comes to dough, the maturation of the dough was maximized enough, so the digestibility is great, especially what they teach you in Italy. Yeast feeds on simple sugars. The longer you let your yeast feed, the less simple sugar is in that dough. You're maximizing flavor, you're maximizing your crumb, your, crumb, your cornicione as you cut through that dough and you look to see the structure mm. through it. And then as you go through your sauce, is it slightly acidic but sweet? Is the tomato, is the cheese, uh, you know, brown perfectly, uh, meaning that did it melt right? Did it not brown too much? Did did uh, is there, is it not too wet? And um, so when it comes to pizza, it's always about balance. It's not mm. over complex. So everyone says, "Hey, what do you think about this dough?" And and I'll go to a place and and I'll say, oh, "It's good." And what do you think, man? You taste that starter? It's a hundred years old. I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> I, I taste that starter. It's awesome." But what do you want that? what do you want them to remember me by or remember you by? Do you want them to remember you by your starter or do you want them to remember you by your pizza? Mm -hmm. They said, well, pizza. I mean, of course. I said, okay, so why don't you just back off on the starter a little bit or yeast or whatever you're doing here? I want them to know there's some complexity to do it. But, man, if I'm buying grande cheese or I'm hand pulling that cheese and I don't taste it because I got this sour tang in my mm -hmm. mouth – this bread and I worked on that, you know, the Alto Cucina and that sauce that I worked on, or maybe I grew it at home, or whatever you did with those tomatoes. And I put it on a pizza. I just don't want to have on a, uh, it to be on a, a baguette. And I put fun <laughs> on, and all of a sudden I was like, wow, this is a great baguette. <laughs> no, I don't want that. I, I want I want to marry together. I want it to take you through a journey. Every time you take a bite of pizza, there should be three to four different flavor profiles. A margarita, for example, you have the acidity and sweetness of, of the San Marzano. You have the saltiness of that salt that you finish. And then you have that creaminess of the cheese. And then you have another sweetness of the basil. Um, mm. And, and so, sometimes people think sweet it has to be about sugar sweet. No, mm. not necessarily. So Every bite should take you through a journey. And if you look at the way I make pizzas I, and, and a lot of other people, it, 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 it's like that. Three to four different flavor profiles. I think that's important. Um, yeah. So, so, hopefully <laughs> so there, there, maybe you could explain this to me because I, I never, I never, I don't, I'm, again, maybe I'm ignorant about it. Uh, what is the whole hydration thing? People say like 90% hydration or 80%. So, what does that mean? Yeah, so so hydration. So I'm making my dough recipe, and I and I and I have. Let's say I make 100 pounds of of, of dough, and mm -hmm. 100 pounds of flour in my dough, and I say I want it to be 70 percent hydration. So 70 pounds would go into that in that batch, or 60 percent hydration, 60 pounds. That's why I'm trying to make it at 100 pounds. So when I talk about dough recipe, it means how much water is in your dough. So having water in your dough would it make it, you know, uh, too hydrated, or or it, it wouldn't. It's uh, actually hydration. Higher hydration is better because it, it actually makes a crispier crust during mm. the baking cycle. So you're always trying to achieve more water in your dough. So when it comes to that, you know, a lot of guys back in the day would just make about 60% hydration, 58, 62, and they wouldn't add any more. And they can bang it out on the, on, the, on the table. They can stretch it a bunch of times and they can toss it in the air. Well, then you kind of go into the hydration world and you're trying to up it. It's a little annoying because people like like on the internet try to say, oh, yeah, I, I, this was 92% hydration. You're like, okay, and you're looking at it. You're like, no, it's not. <laughs> lying. And it's, 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 you brag about your hydration online. I, it, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> and it, I hate it. But guys do it. It's, it's interesting to see. But uh, water's good in dough, and people don't realize that. Yeah, and, and water's important. And, and the type of water is actually important, too. You know, a lot of guys – Oh, New York pizza is a good, uh, it's because of the water. A part of it is I, I've made dough with hard water, like Vegas water, and I've made mm -hmm. dough with soft water. 
I have reverse osmosis systems in every one of my stores except for San Francisco because San Francisco water is great. And I and if you ever look at like, you know, guys making pizzas, you'll have a guy at Pizza Expo make pizza for 30 years. He goes to Expo. He competes. He's looking at his head. He can't figure out why his dough is not good. He's an East Coast guy. <laughs> and he used tap water from his hotel or tap water oh. from the convention center. It's hard. It's full of minerals. It didn't rise right. It's tight. It's unconditioned. And he's wondering what the heck's wrong. Use the exact same recipe. Everything's the same. Well, <laughs> it's the water. Water's important. So, yeah, water's great in New York. Water's great in a lot of areas. But it's important. Uh, it's it's. I've, I've made pizzas all over the place. And uh, I can't tell you how sometimes water is important depending on the area. So then let's let's talk a little bit about your, your different concepts or, because you, you you again you concentrate on on pizza but of course there are different styles of pizza there's different spot, styles of pizza within the United States obviously there's different styles of pizza throughout Italy so kind of talk to us a little bit about the styles of pizza that you have well just talk about your restaurants and then the, kind of wow. the styles of pizza that you concentrate uh, in in the, in these restaurants so you know, depending on the restaurant, if you're looking at Tony's or Pizza Rock, uh, we have multiple ovens. And let's start with Neapolitan. You know, my Neapolitan at Tony's, I have two. I have a Neapolitan that's our margarita that's just made with straight caputo flour, uh, with still with the starter. Um, and then you look at my Tipo One blend with caputo blue and a Tipo One that's blended. And I do some more California styles out of that with different innovative ingredients. And then when you go in the back of the restaurant. Uh, towards the back where we have the electric ovens and, and, and our Marsal gas bricks. We do some Romans, uh, thin, crispy Romans out of our electric ovens, gluten freeze that we do, um, that we make by hand uh, in some of the Ro uh, uh, Detroit style. We do Sicilians, grandmas, um, and then we also do uh, Detroit. So we have a lot of pan pizzas going on. And then we just have other than pan, we have classic Italian, classic American pizza. So you know, pizzas that you would see in Italy versus pizzas that you see in America, like combo pizzas, like the mm. nine item pizza that you'd see, <laughs> um, which is good. But then, and then you look at the dough, the dough is slightly different. The sauce is different. You have more of a hand crushed tomato uh, on the Italian side. It's a little lighter in spice and you have a sweeter, more robust, super heavy paste blended with a, uh, um, with a uh, ground uh, that we would use for the American. And then you have the, we have a coal oven that we do New York style, like uh, tomato pies. And mm. then we see us doing like a clam and garlics out of the coal ovens. And then we have a rotator, a big rotating gas oven. That's a Rotoflex with four decks that we do 20 inch New York style pizzas that we cut into six uh, strombolis, calzones. So, sausage and style pizzas. I mean, it's, it's a little bit, it's kind of a nut cake. I mean, anybody could watch it like this guy's nuts. I mean, yeah. but, you know, I celebrate pizza in its entirety. I mean, like people say, Oh, well, you know, back in the day, nobody did this. It was, it's a concept that nobody did. You, you don't do all these styles. You love Chicago. Or you hate New York. You love New York. You hate Chicago. I mean, it's like in the pizza world, it's very much like sports. It's like, <laughs> we got that and that's the Jersey. And, and, you know, so when it comes to pizza, it's very much like that. For me, I always looked at pizza and pasta very this, much the same. I can't say I love cannelloni and I hate lasagna. I, I love manicotti. I, I can't stand linguine. I love bucatini, but I hate spaghetti. <laughs> it, that doesn't make sense. Nobody does. <laughs> if it's done right, it's great. If it's al dente, it's perfect. If the sauce is right, it's great. So when I look at pasta, I love every type of pasta, no matter how it's, I mean, as long as it's made right. Very much how I look at pizza. Mm -hmm. And when you look at pasta, yeah, would you say a lasagna, would you compare it to like a deep dish? Chicago? Yeah, kind of. It's layered and it's sauce and it's a little heavier. Mm -hmm. And if I look at something light, like an angel hair, it, it's light, like, like something. So I look at it very much like that. If it's done right, it's good. So I celebrate every type of pizza. At the time, back in the day, nobody got it. Nobody got multiple ovens. Everyone said, you're never going to make it. Um, nobody will get it. And now you got guys like in, you know, Vegas or other places like that, um, or, or even in actually New York now where they'll have a Detroit concept and a New York concept, or they'll merge it and they'll have like five different types of styles that they offer Roman and, you know, so-and-so. So it's interesting to see the Renaissance of pizza and where it went 
and what's accepted now and the new Neapolitan with the fatter rim and, mm. uh, you know, and, 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 and now it's accepted or mixing grains. So the world has changed a lot. The consumers change a lot. Uh, they're smarter now. They know what they want. People travel abroad and they come back and say, God, I'd love to have that New Haven style, but I want it out of a coal oven, not a yeah. cake oven. I mean, <laughs> I want it the real deal. So, you know, it's the progression and then how people are open to trying new things. Uh, that's, that goes for the operator and the consumer. So, mm -hmm. but I, I get, I, I think that what, what you're doing is good because again, if you say, if, if you want to go to your, you want to go to one of Tony's restaurant, you know, especially the one in San Francisco, you want to try today, today you're wishing for Detroit, but tomorrow you want a Neapolitan. Yeah. There's one place that you can go to, to get both of these styles. So yeah. I, I, I know that over the, the last couple of years, Detroit style has really kind of like, skyrocket it really take it off so can you explain a little bit of what exactly is detroit style pizza yeah so detroit style pizza i mean when you look at the renaissance of detroit style pizza sean randazzo is a name that really took the helm of that buddies i go back to buddy shields Clover, cloverly some of those guys that are there and when you look at the progression of that and how it's expanded across the u.s a guy named sean randazzo detroit style pizza company really kind of catapulted that um, for me, when you look at a Detroit, it's a rectangular pan. It used to be in a blue steel pan where they used to clean wrenches out of yeah. in Detroit Motor City. They throw their tools in it. They clean it out in a high heat oven. So a guy said, okay, let's push out a dough. Uh, you can use Crisco, butter, oil. You can use a lot of things, lard. Um, I like a liquid butter or even a, a Crisco or, or just regular butter works because it sticks to the corners a little better. You let that dough rise. You use a combination of brick cheese, maybe cheddar. I blend both. Sometimes guys will try to pull it off with Munster. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, maybe a little bit of regular mozzarella. You'll cheese that pizza to the edge. I do a par bake because I like to get my pizza sealed. Mm -hmm. put, put that cheese to the edge. Build it up a bit. Put it in, a, in an oven. I prefer a gas brick oven. I like the corners. And you, you really crisp up the edges and turn it and really get that edge nice and crispy. Uh, you can put your sauce in racing stripes, two stripes down uh, the sides, kind of like not in the middle. And you can either have that on before or after. I prefer it on after. So I like to make my cheese with whatever ingredients in it, take it out, <clears throat> chisel that rectangle out, and like just kind of chisel around mm. the edge, get it out so you keep that crown of chisel that buttery flavor mm. that mac and cheese oh. residual burnt crust that you would have you know and you and you go ahead and add those stripes finish it maybe with romano oregano i do some garlic oil and cut it into squares it's a pizza that everyone like new yorkers would say because i have a school so when we have an american class I have an east coast guy go oh it's just a sicilian no it's not yeah yeah, yeah. it's a bakery pie uh, like uh, in jersey no it's not a bakery pie just wait until you have it. And then let me make a Sicilian pie. And then let me make this chiseled out, crust out, and sauce on top kind of pizza. And they'll eat it. They'll say, oh, no, you're right. It's, and you get a New Yorker or an East Coast guy say, you're right. Okay, right. <laughs> it's not a sissy slice. It's not a sissy slice right here. This is a true, you know, uh, you know, different style. I'm like, yeah, well, it's Detroit style. I just told you this. Right? <laughs> so, like, yeah. so it's delicious. It caramelizes. Um it is a style that has catapulted in the industry. It's in Canada. It's in Japan. It's in Korea. I mean, it's 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 everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest with you, I have never tried it, so I'm really yeah. excited to to try. I know there's a couple of places actually in New York that that, that are making it now. Brian Cider even, Squares. Uh, yes, make, yes. They, 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 I'll tell you right now, they make an awesome awesome pizza. I've been there a few times, making great pizza. Emmy yes. Square is another one. They make a okay. great. Yeah, they they those two make two Detroit's. There's another one that just opened up, I think, recently as well. Yeah, I know that there, there was a place actually of all places, Jersey City, New Jersey, that was doing a Detroit style. I'm not too sure if how it fared through this whole pandemic, which I think yeah. maybe we could talk a little bit about about how how you you guys are faring in San Francisco uh, throughout this whole pandemic. I mean, really, uh, you know, just to just to see, you know, you know, really the. The restaurant industry is, is is some of the most giving industry. That you know they they, they give back. We you know when when the local school has a, a tricky tray, they're they're, they're donating. Uh, they're, you know uh, if there's golf, at, you know I mean the, the restaurant industry is always giving giving back. So I think now is an important time to kind of stand with the restaurant industry and, and kind of if you can 
you know, get a delivery. Support, go out and support yeah. them. I think it's so important that we that we kind of stand behind you guys because you feed us. Yeah, it's no, important. no, it's funny. I've, I've had some talks with some other owners saying that, you know, we've always donated. We've always sponsored Little League or mm. events or given out gift, uh, gift certificates. And I said, God, I think this is one of the first times in life I'm like hoping like people really come and support us and the independent operators or whatever restaurants that are open because uh, we've always given all those years and we still give even the first responders were, mm. were giving out pizzas. But at this time, uh, yeah, we, we really need our customers like to really. And, and we've seen it. A lot of operators, I mean, guys, guys I went to high school with would come down and say, we're going to order for the block. And, you know, when it comes to uh, my customers really kind of came forward and helped us out as much as they can. I know everybody's scared right now and, and worried about, you know, getting out there, but um, it's been great to see that support. I, I, I can't tell you how much. And then I, I've seen customers. I, was, I, I saw some customers I haven't seen in 25 years of the pizza business come in and say, Hey, uh, you know, they're outside, they're picking up a pizza to go. And I'm just able to tell them, say, thank you. Uh, out of all the restaurants, you know, I have 900 square foot restaurant to a 9,000 square foot restaurant. My, my big box restaurants are having trouble. Those 180 seats that mm. uh, nobody's in. Uh, we're waiting. Uh, those have been the most trouble. The slice house models in the industry, the smaller models, especially a lot of guys that are on my team, they're actually doing well. So my tiny one is doing great. My arenas are closed. My ballparks are closed. Some of the casinos are closed. A lot of my licensing concepts are not uh, open right now. And then uh, so I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. Uh, some are down 80 percent. Some are down 50 percent. Some are down 20 percent and I have one that's up. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's you know, we're all working on PPP loans. Some of those mm -hmm. came in. We're all working on our labor to shrink it. We're all getting creative. We're trying to do, you know, different. Um, we're all trying to do different ad advertising strategies, uh, family specials. I mean, the worst sometimes the worst things that come in life bring out the best in us in a, in a, in a way. And, and, you know, competition is is one thing. So yeah, we, we've been pretty creative during this time, but we're just thankful we're still going. And we've, we've actually gotten some support from the government at some locations, which we've been pretty happy about. We had an SBA, uh, our SBA bank that came in and helped me with one of my loans, uh, not just achieving a loan, but for an existing loan, um, a, a bank called Live Oak has, has really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then that was one of those smaller banks. They call me every couple of weeks. How are you doing? That's been nice to see because uh, I'm not getting those from the big banks. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, I think the other way that we can support is say if we are afraid to go out, we're afraid to, you know, go to a restaurant, even just to do take out. You know, I know a lot of restaurants offer gift certificates or gift cards. You can you can buy them even yeah. online. Well, gift cards and then Gold Belly has been big. So before mm. before Gold Belly, if you don't know what Gold Belly is, but we had Foodie Direct and then we went into Gold Belly. We, we've, for like seven or eight years, we've always done pizzas nationwide. So we've done frozen pizzas nationwide. Um, now we offer them at Tony's in San Francisco and Pizza Rock. So, uh, you know, you can get that New Yorker. You can get that uh, that, that cheese pizza, that uh, pepperoni pizza. We, we, we have a veggie pizza on there. It's crazy. When this happened, every Super Bowl week has always been insane. Like, mm. like hundreds of pizzas a week, we do it. Well, well, since the pandemic started, it's almost been like, it's been actually hundreds of pizza a week, uh, every week. So mm. it's still going on. So gold belly, if you ever go on that, you'll see Justin Piazza is going to be on that too from Piazza in Arizona. Mm. I think there's another one coming up. You'll see in Chicago. I'm hoping Tony Choyano will be on that. You see a lot of independent guys that are on that. You're just able to support them. It, it's, it's funny. It's, it's a lot of money, but there's a middleman involved. So, I mean, uh -huh. to get the next day air, three pizzas next day air from California, three states over. It's, it's not going to be cheap. And there's, yeah. you know, there's packaging and everything, but it's, it's been pretty awesome. That saved us a lot. You can go online, get gift certificates. You can call the restaurants. You can get gift cards. So we've been able to do that. Even the bandanas, those pizzaiolo uh, knicker chips that we had. I yeah. turned those the bandanas. You'll see some pictures of those kind of floating around. And we sold those nationwide. And, uh, you're able to just email me, uh, Tony at Tony's Pizza Napolitana .com or Natale, N A T A L E, at uh, Tony's Pizza Napolitana .com. A nice picture there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that, that, there's the negative, right? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. 
My wife <laughs> wants me to grow the beard back, so don't show that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, we're able, we've been sending those nationwide. That's been great. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different ways to get uh, to, to help and support your local. Well, even, even like you said, merchandise. I mean, I'm wearing, yeah. I'm wearing a slice house, a slice house hat right yeah. now. I mean, yeah. that, that's another way to support. I, I think also I saw it was on your Instagram that there was a, a collective of, I guess, restaurants in San Francisco that came up with a t-shirt. Yeah. They came up with a t-shirt um, and they came up with all these logos on it and they supported all the restaurants and monies came to that. If you go to my Instagram page, you can be able to see that. And or uh, you could actually see that at uh, I'm trying to think the company at uh, graphic sportswear graphic sportswear is the company that actually started that. So we're pretty thankful for them as well. There's you, even you, many cookbooks that came out too, like that just launched uh, like uh, where we're able to submit a recipe to. And uh, people have been really I mean, the, the neighbor, the, the, the pizzeria, pizza, pizza makers, are, it's such a camaraderie. And you mm -hmm. see that. too. You look at guys out there, John Arena, Nino, mm -hmm. you know, this these guys are out there, Chris Decker. If you look at everyone out there, like Smokovich, and, and when I'm saying names, I'm saying these are like, you know, the Joe DiMaggio of pizza <laughs> and like the Mickey Mantle and stuff. When you look at that, it's just like everybody gets together and really support each other and they create ideas and and Tony Choyano, Scott Anthony, guys like that mm -hmm. we kind of get together and talk about what's working, what's not, pizza kits to so make pizzas at home. That's been a big thing in our industry. Going to your local pizzeria to selling them, uh, selling your customers dough, sauce, mm -hmm. cheese. So you're making pizzas at home because everyone's sticking home. That's been a giant thing in the in industry. I mean, Nick Bogats in in uh, out of uh, Pittsburgh is like selling like hundreds and hundreds of those a week. So he's killing it at uh, Caliente uh, Pizza and Draft. I, I mean, in in a way, you know, I, I, as sad as it is that we can't get out there to enjoy the restaurants, I guess it's it's good that we were spending time with our family and home, kind of you know, you know, making food together, breaking bread together. You yeah. know, in, in a way, it's almost like going back, like we're going backward, and in, in, in a good way, you know, kind of be bringing back the familial connections. I mean, think yeah. about it. I mean, we're, we're you know, the, who's playing baseball, who's playing basketball, and the families are are becoming more and more separated. In a way, this pandemic, as bad as it is, it kind of brought is bringing oh, us yeah. back together. Sunday dinners every day now. <laughs> you know, exactly, so exactly. I mean, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm trying out different recipes. I'm trying, you know, yeah. my, my, my wife's cooking a lot. So really it, it is a way for us to kind of really come back together again. I think, I think that, it, you know, again, like yeah, I said, Giovanni's, sad. Uh, well, Giovanni's, um, we have an online store and it did a little bit of volume, you know, Giovanni specialties, a little shop I have. And uh, you, I can't tell you how that's gone up a hundred times uh, from what it was, um, we sell caputo flour, tomatoes, um, items that, you know, are just simple items that you'd see, just like you're going to your grocery store, mm -hmm. go to your grocery store. Now you go to the flour aisle. Nope. That, everything's out. <laughs> Nobody has yeast. You're, well, what am I doing? Everyone's baking at home. Everyone's mm -hmm. asking about baking steels, uni ovens. Does a breville work? I mean, we're getting emails about yeah, <laughs> at home. How do you do this? Or I'm making a starter. I mean, the, the, the conversations I've had with consumers or pizza makers or whatever is everyone's cooking at home and it's, it's nice to see. And I, you know, I have a cookbook at home, so I don't, I think I've sold more cookbooks now than I did when I first started it because I'm getting emails saying, Hey, I, I just did the recipe in the pizza Bible. I'm like, Oh, that's cool. And then I'm getting those every day and it's cool because it all of a sudden it cooking is resurfaced again. So it's been, that's been exciting to see that launch and go. So. Well, I, I do want to talk a little bit about your book. So you you have a couple of books out, right? And you you yeah. mentioned to me before when we went live that your that your that your kids' book is getting a lot of traction, a lot of press right now uh, during this this time. So kind of tell us a little bit about your books you have. Yeah, so 2004, I wrote a book uh, with Diane Morgan called Pizza, and that was the first book I wrote. Um, that was early in my career when I kind of got together with her, and it finally came out in 05. Then I wrote a book called Tony and the Pizza Champions. It was a children's book through Chronicle Press that uh, really, you know, kind of just, it, it was funny that I, I talked about this book on another show. It, that book had a girl in it and um, it was, her name was Hannah. And uh, it was, and, and she came along with me and we searched for the best pizza throwers in, in, in the U.S. And Joe Carlucci, Siler Chapman, Michael Shepard, Sean Browser, and they were strong Sean and silly Siler and famous Joe. <laughs> we go to Italy, we compete against all the other teams. We go at the end, we do this pizza pyramid. And at the pizza pyramid, uh, Siler actually falls off in that in my first uh, version. And uh, Hannah climbs to the top, 
wins it for us. Um, and, her, and we called her helpful Hannah. We get the gold medal. <laughs> And, and it's funny thing is, is then the editors came back and he said, oh, well, don't you think a girl that's going across with a bunch of guys in the U.S. and Italy, isn't that kind of weird in a children's book? I said, well, I, it's just a children's book. It's a fun book. We're all characters. And so anyways, the girl got taken out of it. And that was really <laughs> a book that was supposed to be for, you know, kids, girls and boys. And um, it ended up being like, you know, it's a little bit more of a boy's book, but girls love this book. So all of a sudden the coronavirus coming up and this is an older book from, you know, 10 years ago or so. And people are asking me about it. I'm getting interviewed about it and people are reading it. <laughs> and everyone's like, can you read it online? I'm like, sure. <laughs> yeah. so like it's cool because it resurfaced as recipes in it. It's, it's, you know, it's a great book for kids. So if you can find it on Amazon, look for it. And then of course the pizza Bible, I came together with, um, you know, I got together with Steve Siegelman and uh, Susie Heller. Susie Heller collaborated with Thomas Keller on uh, several of his books. Uh, she was with uh, Jacques Pepin for years, and her and I collaborated, and we we started the Pizza Bible. And I, I did all my years of research of being on the road, going to places like, you know, St. Louis, Detroit, Rome, and, you know, Naples. And, and I, really, I really wanted to get as much as I could, like a, a real professional – uh, you know, a pizza maker, you know, writing a book. A lot of times when you see cookbooks, and especially when it goes back to my first book, Pizza, you know, a lot of times you read these books, like, then these guys really know how to make professional pizza. You know, like, I, I, you know, let's talk about grande cheese. Let's talk about ingredients. Let's, you know, and, and, and back then you, you couldn't Google it and get it on Amazon. So yeah. your reference section in older books were terrible because you couldn't get the ingredients. And when you got old books, they would send out it, it send it out before it goes out. You you send it out to the US to certain people. And they'd come back and say, Well, we don't know what sea salt is, and <laughs> we can't find that, and that oil doesn't exist, and you can't find that San Marzano. So you'd be okay, all this has to get taken out. When I did the pizza Bible, I said, Look, <laughs> if I talk about this or cup and char pepperoni, which nobody would ever talk about in a book because they would say, Well, if you can't get it as a consumer, why would you talk about it? Yeah. So this was a book that I needed to write and say, you know, I want to put Detroit in it. It's and and they would say, well, it's not really a popular, you know, New York's very popular. I said, no, no, this is we're going to write it my way. And that book was 500 and some pages long. It ended up being 320. I took a lot of recipes out of it, but most of it, I would say, 98 percent of it really got in there. So yeah. What well, What are your thoughts on on the Old Forge style pizza? I love it. I have a. I, I went to Old Forge with Tony Sarmelli. And I went out to Old Forge, but I was with a guy, um, Scott Anthony, and I were on a road trip. And I went all around doing a book signing. I said, I got to go to Old Forge. And I went to Mary Lou's. And, uh, man, her, it was it was dynamite. It's it's very bakery-style pizza. So if you're this Roman traditionalist guy and you're looking for heavy hydration and you look at that, dough, you ain't going to get it. It's <laughs> heavy. It's dense. Same-day dough, ready sponge. It's heavy on the cheese. It's mm. onions in the sauce. It's 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 delicious, and I get it. If you're this purist or this cool guy that's saying this is this is not right, and you don't get it, sometimes sometimes people don't understand what things are supposed to be like. It's it it is what it is, and it's I think it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, um, you know. So I just just uh, it's funny. I, I and I get a lot of guys say, "Oh, it was terrible." As as a if a guy that knows bread goes to old forge and be like, okay, I'm this bread guy and mm. it's totally not digestible. It's it's heavy. <laughs> it's a little bit of a belly buster. Um, but it's freaking great. It's good. It's, it's good. good. Yeah. It's good, man. Yeah. Where you go to and and Sarah Melly and I went to a couple others and uh, I loved it. I got it and I enjoyed it. So yeah. I, I mean we I mean I I live in Jersey. So here in Jersey we 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 have some some great pizza styles. Even like the like the Trenton style tomato pie. Oh, uh I I, 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 I personally yeah. love it. Papa's or Di Lorenzo. Papa's or Di Lorenzo. I, I I'm like I'm a Di Lorenzo guy. Yeah. Which Di Lorenzo? Like the, though? There's there's uh Well, you isn't it with well, there's Di Lorenzo's pizza, and then there's Di, yeah. Di Lorenzo's tomato pie, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and and they all originated in this little Italian neighborhood in Trenton, and now they're they're out there in Robbinsville. I think there's one yeah. Yardley, but but yeah, I mean, I I I love that style of style. Oh of pizza. man, me really, too, man. I love it. I do. Pe I do. 
pizza like you said pizza does bring people together pizza yeah. is it, you know it doesn't matter like you said if you're if you're from japan if you're from italy if you're from jersey we love pizza pizza yeah. is 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 everything and I, I could talk about pizza every day i could eat pizza actually during this quarantine i probably have eaten more pizza during this quarantine than, than i have in probably years but again going back to my childhood pizzeria i i grew up in low a town called lodi new jersey i know it's a lodi california yeah. i grew up in lodi lodi new jersey and we, we have a pizzeria called Lodi Pizza. And yeah. that, that is a pizza that I grew up on that. And another place is called Pizza. Have you heard of Pizza Town? Yeah, it's I very, know. I've heard of Pizza Town. Yeah, very, yeah, very, 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 very famous. Another very, very famous North Jersey pizzeria. But but again, uh, Tony, I want to thank you so much for taking time out with me today. I, but be, 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 before we conclude, I want you to tell us how we can find you. Give us, you know, how, you know social media, website, stuff like that. Yeah, I think the best way to find me is it's just at TonyGimignani.com, T-O-N-Y-G-E-M-I-G-N-A-N-I.com. You have it right there. That's where you see all my restaurants, all my links, some of the places I support, a lot of the foundations that I'm, I'm together with. And, yeah, no, thanks for having me, and thanks for having that little uh, statue, uh, the, the tile right behind you right there, St. Anthony. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I love that. Thanks. This, this, this you sent to me. Uh, it was about a year or two ago. They, 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 they this to me, and, yeah. And 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 this this is I, I always keep this close to me because this this is my this is my name. I, although although it's uh, we say Saint Anthony of Padua, but in Portugal hey. it's Saint Anthony of uh, Portugal, right? Yeah, so yeah. so he, here he is there. But again, this yeah. this is this is very this is an important important thing that I always keep 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 close to me, Tony. Thank you. I, that, I, I I I thank you for this, and I, I didn't realize that. that that you were that they that, 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 that you were poor Portuguese. I, I I thought you were you were you were all Italian. Yeah, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish. Yeah, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish. Yeah. Great, yeah. great, great combos. But again, yeah. Tony, thank you so much for taking some time out. I can't wait till you come out to Jersey or I or, or I oh, can come yeah. out to, to California and we can I break some bread. Here. Yes, yes. <laughs> but but again, thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good day, huh? You, Be you too. Again, I, I'm Anthony Shilia, better known as Tony Manja. I want to thank Tony Gimignani for taking some time out today to come out at the table with Tony. We'll see you next time. Ciao, Ciao. for now. That's it. Ciao.